gentlemen, boys and girls, corn dog lovers of all ages, welcome to In the Box with your hosts, Matt and Adam. And Gio. Everybody get... Good evening. Hello. Good evening. Matt is on his way. Matt is he's, closer he's to on his beamed. way. He's being beamed in. We're trying to beam Matt in via satellite from Mars. You're live. Oh. <laughs> a good way to say hi to everyone. Yep. Hello, MSL family. Friends, fans, enemies. <laughs> Happy. Right, so what t- so um what scarf? Tell us about your scarf that you haven't gotten. So my indoor soccer love nice scarf that, that we were supposed to get last year. Uh still haven't gotten it. So So well, we we passed the scarf reversary date in August and we missed it. So we didn't have a, a celebratory show. For the for the scarf reverse. No, there was there was no scarf anniversary uh, party or anything like I that. I feel like we so. had well, like we missed having cake. We talk about cake a lot. I feel like we missed our chance to talk about and have cake. Oh, um, like with the the this scarf anniversary. Oh, yeah. I got it. Hey, uh, everybody out there in the chat, let us know 
what the view, what the audio and video looks like and sounds like. I tried a lower latency setting, which should allow the chat to come in sooner than normal, <clears throat> but I don't know how much sooner. Hmm. Let us know. Interesting. Yes, let us know. <laughs> or don't. Either way, we'll just wait. Let them know. Looks and sounds good. And Jack answered pretty quick, so it was much faster than the usual lag between uh, when we say stuff and when YouTube does it. Yeah, I, Brad said the same right. thing. So, well, okay. Cool. Better, I yeah, guess. Yeah, but Brad didn't have the exclamation mark on the end of his, so it wasn't as much effort as Jack put in the message. I see. And Matt seems like he's skipping a bit. Well, that's how that's how, that's how, how Blast fans are. Yeah, that's true. Uh, we're always celebrating. Got a lot of excitement. So I got a call from uh, from in the box and and fellow friend uh, Dennis doing last night. And he was saying, "Hey, you're the you're the pool guy now. Help me put a pool table in in the ba in the basement here." So he brought. <clears throat> he's an architect. Uh, he's closely related related to the famous architect Art Vandelay. I don't know if you ever heard of him. Uh, he's also importer exporter. Thank you, Brad. And uh, oh yeah yeah. He uh, so he brought up. I, you know, we did a video call and he showed me his computer screen. He had his entire blueprint of his house because who doesn't own that on their computer? And he's showing me around the rooms and he's like, where can I put this pool table? And unfortunately, the, the dimensions you need for a pool table are a lot. Like you need, you know, you need your four and a half to five foot wide table plus five feet on each side for a queue plus another foot or so for the backswing. So a lot of people will be like, oh, yeah, I got a, like a 12 by 14 foot room. I want to put a pool table in there. No, it ain't going to work. And sure enough, he didn't really have enough enough room on his side. But I said, but you could probably put like the blast size field in there. That would fit pretty well. Probably could, yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Emma. Wait, for my response, Jason see the Emma, comments hi. below. <laughs> I'm waving to Emma and Jason who never are able to make our show for various excuses, I mean reasons, and now they're here. So hello. Hello, Emma. You finally have come to witness how the wave bullied me. Yeah, pretty much. And I mean, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. We haven't gotten a hate we haven't gotten an I hate you guys in a while though. Yeah. Like, I'm trying to change my ways. <laughs> you just, we just need to work harder. That's right? good. No, <laughs> that's, 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 that's good. Happen. That's good. <laughs> so for some technical stuff, uh, if you guys even care, I know we have some IT geeks out there like me. Um, I've been in. So the program that we use was called OBS Ninja. The streaming program I use is called OBS Studio. It's a pretty popular version of uh, broadcasting software for online streams. To Twitch and YouTube and Facebook and all those other places. Um, I would not be surprised if some of the teams are using them in arenas. Nice hat. <clears throat> so, turns out Matt just happens to have the perfectly wrong model phone that doesn't work with some of these web libraries that this guy made. So uh, we're we're struggling. We're trying to work with the developer. We got a bunch of things to try. Um, Matt, we we don't know if Matt will fake freezing up. Or not. <laughs> uh, but I see what they're saying that he's skipping. So, but, yeah. but bear with us. We're we're getting through it. And at least he's here with us. At least he is here. I don't talk. I don't talk much anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Oh well, let's let's not say you that. Just write You'll everything on the tonight. board. I'll write it, talk I'll write it on the board. <laughs> Next up, so, I hate you guys. Let's... Let's, uh, let's, oh no, we can't just jump right into it. Never mind. Just kidding. We can jump right into a bunch of stuff. We have a couple things to talk about tonight. Um, the first one, we have 13 people on, so let's talk about this. Uh, this serious time here before, unless Matt's going to write something funny. Wait, <laughs> Matt, wait, let, let us be serious no, no, for a little bit. No, you, no, 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 serious. Yeah. I don't know go if ahead. you're serious. When you say right. That. I couldn't even take him serious right there. No, go ahead. Okay. Um, so, longtime Wave fan, uh, Allison Phillips, uh, like best friends at Everton, best friends at Ian Bennett, uh, helps run uh, Ian's store and runs Ian's podcasts that he has. Um, she came down with cancer, I think, last year and then beat it. And unfortunately, the cancer's back. So, 
Uh, she and Ian are doing a benefit on his site. It's a hoodie and a t-shirt, uh, IB26 logo. And um, if I look at it, and the hoodie says live for today on the side with a cool like um, rainbowish yeah. color, yellow to, to pink uh, logo. And the t-shirt has a just IB26 logo on the front of it. All the proceeds are going to go to uh, her cancer benefit. So go to IB26 door. IB26store.com and I'll put it in the chat right now and order one of those. I ordered a hoodie and I'm trying to get another thing, but I screwed up the order and that didn't order it in time. So do that. Go out there and uh, whatever else we can do, we'll be happy to help. But uh, just wanted to get the word out. Go buy something. It's for a good cause and it has a cool logo on it. It's for a cool guy. Yeah, I'm definitely going to buy one. I, I like. I saw the hoodie. I was like, I want that. So I bought the hoodie today, and then I noticed it was $5 shipping, and I'm like, should I just meet Ian somewhere and get it? And then I noticed there was another hoodie that I really like. It's the black one with blue sleeves. I like, yeah, that's that's the one I'll probably end up getting. And it's a zipper one, which I kind of like. And I already placed the order on the first one, so I didn't want to be, I, I wanted to cheap out. I didn't want to spend $10 on shipping for 10 miles or 15 miles or whatever it is. So we're going to have to figure that out, but... That's that. All righty. So that's a serious moment. That's a serious moment. Serious moment is not over. <laughs> We're down to 12 because one of them went to go get a corn dog. So, Matt, you can't insult me until you win a championship. Wow. <laughs> Thank you Again. for the update. Again, when you win a championship, you can insult me. It's a uh, a Ron Newman Cup. Sorry, dressed like a yellow chair knight at CQ Arena. What? Yeah. No, no, <laughs> no. It's not. <laughs> oh no, no! Everyone's on the opposite side. Everyone's underneath the camera. Oh no! It's not that either. No, it's not. That was Ontario's excuse. Now there's 13. So if you want to update it again. I'll just let you know every time. I erase it. Hey, uh, by the way, um, I don't know if Dave's out in the in the oh. chat here or not, but uh, we have a, a guest request for a sound effect. So, you know, t typical sound effect like... Uh, and, and the... Oh, no. That thing is stuck in my head. Welcome to Ontario International no. Airport. So we do I can't have wait to be there. I can't wait to go there. We do have one. It's a special request specifically for you, Matt. <laughs> so Dave Koleski asked me to uh, grab that sound file and play it for you because he, he said you probably still have that song in your head and just in case you didn't now you do again thank you great <laughs> an hour uh, maybe well i don't i wouldn't say an hour i would say about 30 minutes of my day was listening to that over and over and over again that's funny that's funny but you uh, want enough to buy a new phone i mean you want a bunch of money to pay some bills with I did. I am pay for part of my part of my trip to California. To so. where? Welcome to Ontario International uh. Airport. <laughs> so uh, that we got that out of the, out of the way. I, I you gotta send that. You gotta send that to me because I think when I land, that's the first thing I want to play. You'll probably hear it over the loudspeaker. That's what I'm gonna say. They're probably they're probably gonna be playing it there. It's nonstop. Wait, wait, this? It's the most average airport in the world, though. Yeah, I saw that. Never been there, so I could... I, yeah, I was supposed one. to be there, but... Life in, I want to say last year, but I don't know what year it is anymore. So I think last year, when we were going to make the San Diego trip, the plan was to fly into San Diego, drive up to Ontario, and fly out of Ontario. But that was before I even knew about the... Welcome to Ontario International Airport. I hope you pick up. And it's you know, it's funny. It's 
it's about the same price as like going into LAX or or San Diego. What? So I just I just said I might as well fly into Orla or Ontario, and then just drive down to San Diego. It's a couple hours, and then drive back. So Scotty says, uh, funny enough, I hope you picked American, Matt. He did. And Matt, tell us what happened to your flight from American already. Well, no, it hasn't. No, it hasn't yet. Oh, okay. Okay. No, but they are uh, canceling quite a few flights due to the, the pandemic. Do we know, do we know uh, not to, to jump in, but we're talking about oh. arenas. Do we know when the new, uh, when San Diego becomes Ocean City or what? Ocean, Ocean? 2023 season. Okay, so, so that's not, when they go from being San Diego Soccers to Ocean's Oceanside San uh, Soccers. Sure, Towson Blast fan. Hey, hey, hey! <laughs> that's not that far. <laughs> it's a ten-minute drive from Towson to Baltimore. Okay, we'll count that. Um, so it said twenty twenty-three. Oh boy! When Baltimore can oh. outdraw Utica. This I, guy. I think I might just. Yeah. I'm gonna just bow out of this conversation for a minute. Yeah, because Matt is so so excited. I, I I'll give you that. You know what? You could you could be cheerful for that. Gio, I'll give you Gio, something. To cheer. I cannot wait. I cannot wait. I will let you know. So Baltimore Blast fans, I I think I've come to a conclusion, a decision. I'm gonna come down for one of the games. I just don't know when yet. It's, I mean, you have three to choose from. <laughs> I do. Yeah. I do have three. <laughs> I have several to choose from. Um, uh, but I will I will be there. And I'll probably be one in the playoffs, too. So, whatever. Wishful thinking, I see. Yeah. Or Geo, I mean. Ha, 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 ha. You got the easiest conference, Matt. I mean, Adam. Um, I don't know I was about, about that. Say, I have the easiest conference? Why? Yes, I, I don't. Wait. Yeah, probably. I would no yeah, way. I think so. There's no way. I think KC and Milwaukee are fighting for the top spot. I yeah. I, I agree with that, but I do think KC is going to take it just because of their performance last season. The amount of the amount of teams that could that could take each each division. It's, I mean, in the East, I'd say three out of four. In the Central, I'd say two out of four, and in the West, I'd say either two or three out of four. So. Yeah. And I, I mean, there's also a chance if you look at the record and the way it works, there's a chance an entire division could make the playoffs. Yeah. I don't know though. Uh, he is signing some professional, like ex professional players, but then I'm like, uh, how are they going to play indoor though? So they're going to kick the ball and they're going to score goals and it'll be the no, same but game. It, it's a completely different game. Completely different. You saw how well Atlanta Donovan adapted. He got 8,000 people in that arena when he was injured <laughs> he for half well. the season and didn't travel <laughs> at all. But he scored a goal. He uh, got an yeah, assist. But... He jumped around and, and celebrated. Uh, I, so, I, I know there's, there's certain transitions that don't go well. I'm guessing everyone in this chat has already seen this. But uh, I want to make this uh, more famous, more more famous. Uh, Adam, let's let's get back to your. T- we'll talk about playoffs and stuff in a second. There, uh, there was a rumor that went around that the MASL was going to change the goalkeeper rule for this season, where the goalkeeper is only allowed to touch the ball once per possession. So once he distributed the ball, he couldn't touch it until. It went out of bounds, a stoppage of play, or the other team touched the ball. Or if the goalkeeper crossed midfield. Yes, or if the goalkeeper crossed midfield. But the four-second rule still applied. So some sort of either sprinting or magic or Baltimore field size would have to happen for that to really work. I should sample that, that thing, sound. Put it on the soundboard. You probably no, should. Yeah. That's disgusting. <laughs> so anyway. I can help that. I, I, um, so by the way, n- nobody steal this idea because this is my million dollar idea. I give it away here live on the air. I have a million dollar idea of a whiteboard for the shower that can sync up to a device. Cause I come up with so many good ideas in the shower and have nowhere to write them. And then some of them I forget by the time I get out because old and short term memory. But one of the ideas that came up in the shower 
was this song idea. If anyone heard the song uh, Bodies by Drowning Pool. Now, granted, I'm not a metal fan anymore. I used to be. I used to listen to a lot of it. Not really anything like this with the screamy, crazy, growly vocals, but I got this phrase in my head. And I thought, what would be cool to do a pair, like a weird Al like parody song and call it Goalies? That said, I recruited a couple friends from Tennessee who I know from through Musica Ventures. Uh, my friend Mike did guitars. Uh, his friend and his bandmate Nate did the vocals and did an amazing job on them. I did the bass. I uh, did the drum MIDI programming and stuff. Then I mixed the whole thing together, threw the video together. I present to you in the box version of Goalies. So there it is. So that's the in the box official response to that rule proposition. Let the goalies kick the ball. Are you gonna write it down now? <clears throat> now, now, here I, I have a question. I just you know because I want to know how you guys feel, or if you know the fans want to comment as well. What if the goalie keeper rule goes through? What then? I'm out. That's it. I'm out. <laughs> so you're just going to not watch any of the season? None of it. At all. How about you, Matt? No, I will. No, I'll still watch. I mean, it's it's definitely going to add a little interesting twist to the league. Um, so is, is it really officially... Like no, mass, no, 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 no. No, they the league was waiting specifically for our ruling on it before making their decision. Oh. <laughs> so then, in that case, I vote no. Right. Um, can we can we ask uh, Kansas City announcer Nick Bassos what his opinion is on the goalkeeper rule? Hey, Nick. Uh, when we talked last, you had a couple of options and a couple of opinions on it. Uh, what do you think now? Ah, uh, ah, uh, 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 yeah me too yeah so we were talking about this so so here here's the thing <clears throat> i have a number of friends in the league who are goalkeepers mm -hmm. and i have an, some some want to say like good friends closer friends that are goalkeepers for a certain team that is near me when covid season was on and they were talking about this whole thing and they were maybe going to even do it for like the Central Cup last year, which we'll get to that in a second. And then we started watching none, none of our teams in the league. I was kind of for the rule because it seemed like I don't want to watch the guys that I don't like watching. Like, no offense, Paulo, awesome goalkeeper, but it's not my team. Like, I don't have the connection with Paulo that I do with like a Josh Lemos. So when I have a couple goalkeepers, including some, a few that are not on my team, talk about this and how upset they are about it. It got me thinking, it's like, you know what? That's, this is a big deal now. This, this means a lot more than it did when we were just fans watching the, the, the game. And I think I said this last time, I think if we fast forward three, let's say the rules implemented now, we go through time three years from now and we watch a game. I think the game will be fine because the rules already in place. Everyone's adapted to it. I think, the two to three years it takes for people to adapt to it is going to just be ugly and, and not good. 
Right. Uh, and I think there's a lot of chance for the league to really improve and grow and just get there. By the way, we lost four people since I played the video, so I'm not sure about that. Um, <laughs> I think they're, uh, running out, they're running out to attach their their whiteboards into their showers. Oh, there, yeah, damn it, guys! Yeah. It's my idea. Well, I need one that can connect to a device though, so that I can write stuff in the shower and then hit something and it shows up in a text. Is that boring? Holy crap! Oh, you're sneezing. Oh, you're yawning. I'm like, what, what did I do? I just put you to sleep with my drill. Oh. You okay? Allergies. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. I'm allergic to this rule. Al yeah, I mean, I have allergy season usually from like January-ish to late December every year. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what's in the air or what, but yeah. It's, it's goalkeeper rule changes. I yeah, think even you just saying the word goalkeeper is making me sneeze. Jeez. Goalkeeper. I think, I think um, this rule obviously is... It's it's not a good rule. Like not a lot of players agree with it. I'm pretty sure there's owners that don't agree with it. I just feel like if they're gonna do it, they should you know test it, see what it what, how it looks like instead of just forcing it. That's one takeaway. And the second takeaway is if you want to enforce a certain style of play, why not just have the conversation with the teams? Like, hey, look, we want to see more action, not so much sitting. Yes, the coaches can decide to ignore it or the coaches can decide to implement a style of play where it allows more, you know, going forward, more attack of more action. Right. I got, a, I got an idea. So I, th I think, I think it's more so the way it's being done where it's kind of just being like forced down someone's throat. And to your first point, if only there were leagues associated with the MASL that you could test this out in. Only if. So, I, I think I think the league needs some sort of happy medium, and I, and I think as as fans watching it in in person, most of the time we don't like it when it's like, oh, Darren Toby kicks it to Andrew Coughlin, kicks it to Darren Toby, and they do that for forty five seconds. Yeah. But at the same time, we don't want to see like, oh. Andrew Coughlin kicks it to Darren Toby, and then he's confused, doesn't know what to do, and then all hilarity ensues. Or I, I think, or or I, Andrew I, Coughlin gets the ball and throws it as hard as he can, and then stands there for five minutes. Right. Mm -hmm. So I, I think either keep it the way it is, or maybe have like a limit. I mean, you already have like a four-second rule. Why not have another official like? Like let's say five touches, and here's something, a, some, something like that. Here's a crazy idea. Why not let the rules stay the way they are because we're in a good place, and grow the league, marketing wise and just overall, instead of worrying about rules. That's it, guys. So you're saying, we're you're done. Saying let yep. the goalies kick the ball. Have a good night. <laughs> so That's a crazy idea, right? I got I got an idea. I got a weird idea. And this has been talked about throughout the history of sports. What about performance based bonuses? So oh, we're, well, we're going to go into that. Ooh. Let's say from from the league to teams, not for individual players. Let's, oh, I see what you mean. Let's okay. say your team scores more than 10 goals. You got 5 grand. Some arbitrary number. Let's say you're, I don't know. That's the only one I can think of. Let's say you eat 10 corn dogs in the course of a game. You get another. But no, I was just thinking about that. To, to If you want, because, but on the other hand, one of the most exciting games I've ever been at as far as just nerves was the two to one win over a certain team a certain couple of years ago. Three goals total scored you in the entire game. Hold on to that one, Matt. I add them. <laughs> you hold on to it. <laughs> you, I'm, I'm going to, but no, seriously. It's seriously. <laughs> it, was, it was the most nerve-wracking, exciting game I've ever been at, other than the game that happened. But, but, weeks but ago. that's because you're a fan, though. Like, right? Like, for me and you, that would have probably been, like, a super exciting game. Yeah. Now, what if we ask... Uh, Matt is an a indoor fanatic, so it's not going to... Matt's probably going to be... He's even named that. Thing. Right. So... <laughs> 
so it, but if we ask a neutral fan that isn't like super super vested into the game, how they would feel about that game? That's a good point. That, that's my only thing with that. I, I, Wait, I, are I, you I asking me? <laughs> we're not asking you anything. Don't worry. We're what if asking. what if instead to make it more exciting, we made each of the goals worth more points? So it seemed yeah. like there were more points scored in the game. Uh, do, do, who do I turn in my letter of resignation to? <laughs> you're done. You can't. You're stuck here forever. You're not getting out this time. No, but I, I, I think there's other ways to, to, to get what. Oh my god. <laughs> I think there's other ways to get what the league wants from its teams, and it doesn't have to be pretty much eliminating a position. So Emma, so Emma's British for everyone. So I want to apologize for. For Emma, first of all, I mean, uh, I just want to explain that Emma's British. So, uh, in England, teams can go for ninety minutes and have a zero to zero score, and it's still an exciting game. Um, here in America, we don't deal with that. Like, we can't leave a game unless there's a winner. Decisive. <laughs> Very nice. So. Uh, Sarah Knowles had said, why don't we just let the games end in a tie instead of going to this overtime and shootout and the different points and everything like that. I would storm the field if that happened. And you just did like outdoor with three points to win one point to tie. The problem with that is we're dumb Americans and we can't take that. <clears throat> nope. And Gio, nope. you, you, even though you're, you're, you're from Mexico, you've signed the little paper that's saying you're now a dumb American, so welcome to the club. So, no, yeah. but I'm okay with low scoring goals or low scoring goals, scoring low scoring goal. games, <laughs> low scoring games. I'm completely okay with that. For me, you know, I'm, I'm, I've never bought into the American football. I've never bought into basketball. I've never bought into baseball. So, like those games, like that high scoring game or that concept is just like they but, scored one touchdown for me, not seven points. But on the other hand. I watched a game a number of years ago that I it was Solis to Snore, I think beat Dallas like 22 to four or some crap. Oof. It was one of the more boring games I've ever seen. Cause it took for, for so many goals and celebrations. And then by the time, by the time it was like 11 to nothing, the guys aren't even celebrating anymore. They're like kind of wandering out in the field, but they're still doing the lights and the crowd and everything. And by the time it gets into the double digits there, it was almost like you felt sorry for him. It's like, okay, where is the mercy rule here? Where and and I mean, Sonar fans are still gonna gonna still still celebrate, but but on the other hand, There's we saw no mercy in Mexico. I'm we sorry. saw the wave beat a certain team a couple of years ago, like fifteen to three or whatever it was, and every kid. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> yes. Uh, but no, we, we saw, we saw, and Ian scored, I don't think he got a hat trick, but I think he, well, maybe he did. I don't know. It's hard to keep track of Ian's goals because there's so many of them. And, uh, <laughs> Emma says she's never said that whole pip pip thing in her life. I don't believe it. If you're British. You have to part of the she probably said it once in her dreams, like the queen or something. So <laughs> I don't believe it either. So. But anyway, all the kids on the way to leaving the arena were just, do you see how many goals Ian Bennett scored? And it was. One of the greatest things for the kids that was their idol had scored a whole bunch of goals. It didn't matter what the situation was; they just loved it. Right. So. I, I, I just, I just feel like there's other ways to do it. I think just you know, getting the teams to understand what the league wants and getting them to play in that style could be much better. Or why even worry about that? Let let fans get behind however their team plays, and you just worry about promoting with more you know getting our names into more conversations promoting more content doing things you can actually control instead of forcing rules well, yep. and it, is there one rule that is going to say oh well that one will increase the tenants for sure multi-point scoring there's no oh. rule that's going to do that what if okay <clears throat> hear me out, uh, hear me out. Except, okay you guys remember American Gladiator? Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. Did you hear me out? Hear me out. <laughs> what if the players could carry around those big, like, like poofy bat things? You mean the joust? The joust things, and just like bat people in the face with the because it it doesn't hurt. I mean, it's big puffy. So, so like lacrosse. 
No, the, lacrosse is a stick. They, they beat the hell out of their other players <laughs> with a stick. Which, I mean, sure. Um, but imagine if they had one of those. And they were just, you know, you could still playing soccer with all the normal rules, but then you could just hit the guy with the stick. Padded stick. I don't like it. One of the best things I heard about trying to make baseball more exciting, because I'm not a baseball fan at all, Radio station did it like 25 years ago. Was one of the best calling answers was let the guy take the bat with him around the bases. <laughs> you know what will make baseball more exciting? Not change watching the, it. Change the style of announcers. That's going to make the game more exciting. What if if you hit it over the center field, it's two points. If you hit it over the right side, it's three. Oh my the God, it's a multi-point it's... system. <laughs> It just corrupts everything. <laughs> it does. And so, Matt, to your point a while ago about the five touches or whatever, I get where you're coming from, and I like the idea of trying to fix the problem that we don't think exists that some people think exists. But you don't want to add more rules. More rules makes right. things more confusing, makes fans more confused, makes things go, right. I don't get it. Out. Why? Why You can't touch it five times? Like, who's counting that? What's going on? I like the idea that Mark Litton had of just let the goalkeeper go wherever he wants on the field with the ball, without the ball, whatever. But when he's with the ball, he only gets four seconds, no matter where he is, if he's past half field or not. And then also make it, make it true for six attackers too. make it across the board. Goalkeeper can only hold the ball for four seconds. I think, I think, you know, the league doesn't need to worry about fixing a style play. I think let the coaches handle that. If, the team wants to play with the keeper, let him play with the keeper. Just learn how to take away the free man, learn how to do a high press without getting vulner- be- becoming vulnerable with an over-the-top ball. Or have your keeper wait for that over-the-top ball and just steal it when it's played. Well, or, I mean, you saw the, you saw what? Well, three goals very similar. In the, in the video that I, that I just played, I mean, Paulo's goal was amazing. That was from almost midfield, just a strike right up the middle. But the other three were the exact same style, where the defense was like, "Not mine. He's not my guy. He's somebody else's guy." And you just let him wander. You let the coach just coach the game. <laughs> I love it. So, um, I gotta send a message to someone. We need to do another song. Fortunately, I don't have to change the music any at all. We just have to change the lyrics. Uh, yeah, I I agree with you on that. I I don't like the fact that. I'm trying to draw comparisons to hockey as well because hockey had a problem where the goalkeepers were playing the ball or the puck in the corners way too much. So they put the little trapezoid thing out there saying, you can't go in the corners. This is no good for you. Um, And, and it increased scoring and it helped, it helped the game. And there were too many people getting injured, flying into the end of the, trying to get the puck icing at 80 miles an hour, so they just said, you know what? We're just going to do the international rule. If the puck goes over the line, we're, we're calling it. Everyone was like, oh, it's going to make the game terrible. No one's going to want to watch. It made it better. But you're right. Like, there is no one rule other than you guys see Squid Game. You know, opponents maybe being eliminated in the game. No. Um, <laughs> nah, that's a, that will change the game. That will change the game. <laughs> You know, it's funny that you say that. A, a, a brief history lesson in in the Mesoamerica civilizations, there was a game that was played, and the losers, sorry, the winners were sacrificed, and that was their like oh. glory to become a sacrifice for the gods. Fun fact you, of the day: Is that why you cheer for Dallas? <laughs> sorry. No, I'm not sorry. Yeah, yeah, maybe a little bit. <laughs> you guys are so mean to Dallas. I, I mean, I'm hoping, I'm hoping for big. We haven't really talked about that a lot. We're hoping for big changes. Everyone in the league said they needed a coaching change, and they got yeah. one. And I think they have a great person. I think pa- uh, Pablo is going to be great. I think he has. Uh, if you have ever seen him get mad in a game, I think he has a really good killer instinct. Um, I think, I think there's. I don't think it's going to happen right away. I think they're. People oh, yeah, might be disappointed yeah. if it doesn't happen immediately, but I think just hang in there, Dallas fans. I think. Yeah, I think you know, give him this year, this season to to rebuild, and next season to to get the pieces he wants, and you'll see a different team. I think. 
I think even this year, I think I think you'll see you won't see winning the division changes, but I think you'll see progression from Oh yeah, start for to sure. For sure. No matter who he has in there. Yeah. Uh, what is it? <laughs> Okay. I don't know, Matt's so, writing a book over there. Chapter one. No, we're I'm going into the next the next topic. Oh, oh okay. okay. So well, that was our cue then. Yeah. So we're, I think we're done. Uh, so uh, let's answer Adam's question from before, from a long time ago. So our friend Jay, and, and we need to come up with controversial topics for Jay to rip apart the next day on, on Jay's show. So if anyone hasn't subscribed to Jay's podcast or uh, YouTube channel, it's MJSL. Which is kind of clever. Which is kind of clever. I give him that. Um <laughs> I, he wouldn't let me act dumb and not understand where it came from. I don't get it. Oh, J. Oh, <laughs> he wouldn't let me play that card. But uh, Jay has Milwaukee going twenty-two and two, losing one to Florida and one to Baltimore. He said they're going to sweep KC because since he's been a fan for all of a year and a half, they've never lost to KC, and they're going to sweep. Uh, and he also has Chihuahua going 0-24. They're the next Rochester. Um, I don't think he's correct. I see. I, I did a preliminary look through the schedule. I have. Now, I'm going to say there's a caveat. I have Milwaukee at 17-7 and or 18-6 and um, based on some of the back-to-backs, the road trips, and uh, just possibilities, injuries, and things. Now, that said... Depending on what happens with all these visas, topic we really didn't kind of talk about, and I don't know if we can because we don't really know a lot. The wave could either look really, really close to what they did in the championship season, or they could look like a completely different new team. There's no real middle ground there. Like, <clears throat> I don't want to say anything bad about anybody. We're, we're missing Drew Ruggles and Chad Vandegrift. I think uh, Huffman makes a very good substitute for one of them, and I think... Um, Tyler Turner, the new signing from originally from Seawolves, but who's also played in MLS, was drafted in MLS, won Rookie of the Year, and was played on uh, U.S. Men's uh, 23 national team. I think he's going to be supposed to play for Utica last year. Well, sorry, he's supposed to play for Utica. He wanted to play for the Waves, so he invented coronavirus to cancel the season, just so he didn't have. To. Thanks, Tyler. Yeah, thanks. Thanks a lot, guy. No, don't do that. People Somebody's going to come back gonna... to him with that. He's going to be like, I did what? <laughs> <laughs> um, so I think I think that between the two of them, plus um, non-Way fans may not even realize this, but in the nineteen the nineteen twenty the 2019-2020 season, Matt Yang, who up to that point had never played a game, stepped up huge. He's super fast. He's a great defender. We got Ali Berry, who did the same thing, um, has almost Max Ferdinand like foot skills, but he's a much bigger guy. Um, great for like a defensive midfielder or defender. I think we have some really good pieces coming up. So I don't think twenty-two and two. Oh wait. But I think uh, I think so. And I don't think it's twenty-two and two based on the way the wave's going to perform. I think it's the way the other teams are. Gonna so this is what I'll say, and this is for every team that has been away from the game for this past season, right? They're at a a professional level, um, whether it's whatever you think it is, you know, when you're competing at a certain level and you step away from it, it takes some time to catch up to that, right? It, it takes some time to build up the, even the minute details, like your reaction time, your thought process or the speed you make your decisions. Those little things, Take time to come back. I, I know certain players might pick it up faster than other players, or some players might return to the form that they were in faster than other players, and some might take longer. But understand, that is a handicap. Oh, sure. Yeah, definitely. The East Coast, the only one that has that benefit is Florida. Besides that, we all have been away from the game for a year and a half. The The... The central, you know, unfortunately, you know, KC ended really, really strong, and Milwaukee has to come and face them. It's not their first game, though, but still, 
you know, hopefully by the time you guys do face, you guys are up to speed and you won't have to face that. Right. So it, it's, it's a real thing, you know, teams, players will, I'm pretty sure players will agree to agree with what I'm saying, but getting practice form is completely different from game form. So yeah, getting it's, to that, it's not like these guys have been time. sitting doing nothing for you. Of course not, but it's just the speed, right? It's like I can go in and spar a person as much as I want, but when it comes in fight night, it's completely different. Yep, you know, agreed. The forms are different. But you know, speaking of wave in particular, I know at least three players are playing four are playing in in at least weekly futsal games in competitive leagues. Um, I know no, all the Chicago I don't guys. Doubt it. <clears throat> all the Chicago guys are playing nothing but soccer down there. And have been in the last eighteen months, so I, I think it. And and I don't doubt it. I don't doubt it. But it's just, you know, going into to a game, whether it's futsal or whatever it is, it's it's you know, they're probably playing futsal with the same group of guys, right? It's like they know each other. Yeah. It's gonna take some time to rebuild that chemistry. It's gonna yeah. take some time to to get your reflexes to where it was, <laughs> or even just remembering the tactics of the game, right? You might know it. But it's muscle memory. You got to get back. Yeah, it doesn't it doesn't come back right away? Now that said, I have heard from several players that the practices, wave practices, are much more intense than games for the most. Part. Maybe not your playoff games and your late season games, but your standard regular season games. The the, the games are are really a uh... yeah for their bodies. Yeah, of course it Ooh, has to be. Speaking of <laughs> it has speaking to be. of. Speaking of practices, do you guys, and, and if the chat wants to, to chime in as well, uh, on, on days where I work late, um, would you guys want me to go live to view Utica practices? Yes. Okay. I'll answer for everyone. No one else is going to say yes, but I'll say yes for you a minute. No. I bet you Jack will say yes. <laughs> yeah, Jack will say yes. Uh, so that's that's a good point, point. Um, and another conversation we need to have and figure out. So when we moved game, when we started the in the box thing, it was Friday nights because that was the end of the week. What the hell else are we gonna do? There's no games. There's no playoffs. Everything got canceled. Um, Jack does say yes, please. Like like what wait, are we gonna wait, do? Wait. Let's just spend every Friday talking. What do you what? Wait wait, wait. you never answered Adam's question. Uh, yes I did. Nah. You got so distracted was, by his, by the name. Oh, he said is Jay wrong? Yeah, no, I talked about that for like five minutes. Oh yeah, you're right. <laughs> so yes, Jay is wrong. Jay, you're wrong. Next topic on MJSL is Adam wrong? Yes, Adam's wrong. <laughs> um, He's wrong. So we're all wrong. The nice thing about this league is we can all be wrong together. He is more wrong. Anyways. Right. Uh, but yeah. So so what was I saying? Jack, I didn't see the picture. Or of Friday. Heat. Friday. Friday. Oh, so we had the shows on Fridays, and then when the when the season started, we were like, "Let's move the show to Mondays because we can recap the weekends." And Friday nights are going to be a lot of games, and we don't want to just we don't want to have you guys make a choice and lower the viewership of the MASL games just to watch our show. <laughs> Wait, did I get that right? I think I got that right. So it sounded good. Sounded great. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So. We moved it to, to Monday, so what we're, what we're realizing is that I don't think the benefit of us just recapping games is very good for anyone. I don't think it's... It's like, hey, let's talk about this game that you guys either didn't watch and have no idea what we're talking about or did watch and already know what we're going to say. But we can give our reactions. We can give our reactions, but there's also this betting angle that's coming in this season. Um, <sighs> I don't know what's going to happen with when the lines are going to come out, when the things are going to, I mean, we're going to have games every day of the week through the season. So I don't know how that's going to work. Like, I don't think you're going to long, you're no longer going to have like MASL week one because games are going to be played Monday, almost every night of the week for a while. And in certain weeks, well, I like think, I think you're, you're, you're going to see it similar to like the NFL where you have Friday to, to Monday. And I, I think in some cases it's going to be like Friday to Tuesday or. Yeah. So that means, so that means Thursday I'm, night is I'm really fine. should be our target for shows. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm good with that. Um, whatever. We'll, we'll see how it, how it goes. And yeah. Cause we only have, or, I mean, there's only a couple of weeks 
four weeks until the first official regular season game. Which, if you're not hyped about that, I don't know what you can be hyped about. So yeah, four weeks from Friday is the Ooh, first. You know game. what you could be. You know what you could be hyped about. The Central Cup. Central Cup. Wait, a scarf. Matt, do you have an update no, on your scarf? No, I was gonna no subscribing by clicking whatever is down down uh, there. Subscribe. Yeah. So yeah. hey, hey, uh, let's let's. let's have but a yeah, Central Cup. Wait. Let's a, no, no, hang on. Let's have a serious. Let's have a serious conversation here for a second. There are 655 people in the group. The post last week asking for subscribers got 900 and some views, and it took Jay and Alex fake accounts to get us from 140 to 150. And the turf and boards. And the turf and oh, boards. Yeah, Sydney's which... watching. <laughs> so, so what's up? What's up, guys? I know everyone watching now and, and saying, but for people who watch us after the fact, hit the little subscribe thing. Even if you don't watch the episode, the subscriptions help us. Even if you don't want to subscribe, do it. Because when sometimes when you don't want something, you don't realize you don't want something until you really want it and it's too late. Although it'll really never be too late because you can always hit subscribe. You know, I'm going to start, I'm just going to start, um, Finding out who's not subscribing, and that sounds uh, creepy. I'm gonna, <laughs> I don't, I'm I gonna don't find. I'm gonna find out, and and I'm gonna uh, make them a Utica fan. Yeah. Oh. Then we could be the the top the the top attendance team. So you in the could league. say, with Commissioner Bo- Tozer, are you subscribed? Commissioner Bo- Tozer, are you subscribed to In the Box? What the hell's in the box? <laughs> <laughs> no, he doesn't sound like that. He's a very nice person. Unless you're coaching against him, I, th- I imagine that would be a pretty intense. Well, now he's a commissioner, so he'll be nice to everyone. He can be nice and angry at everyone at the same time. Yes. He actually was on the show, so. It was there. I remember that. So, it was fun. Yeah. Yeah. So, anyway, uh, Central Cup. When does that start? A week from Friday. Yes. So, is it, okay, so is it. It's KC, Omaha, Wichita, and St. Louis, right? Mm-hmm. Yes. Okay, good. So I, I had the I have the four right teams. Okay. And they're playing a, a round robin. They're playing a round robin. <laughs> um, that, those seem like really good odds, but I still won't bet on Dallas because Dallas is not in. That's why they have these odds. How many zeros do you take off of Dallas's in? A couple, one or two. <laughs> oh, that's <laughs> ding corn dog moment. Sorry, we're not actually doing corn dog moments anymore. We're uh, we're calling oh, YouTube. Actually, you know what you should do, Geo. For the shorts videos that are not Wallace scores, just put the corn dog moments tag on it as well. Oh yeah. Let's still put yeah. the shorts on. Okay, it's problem solved. Internal, internal. So what do you have? Wing, uh, KC at four to one. Yep. Oh, I'll put it back up. So yeah, I, I think, I, I think the top two are going to be KC and Omaha. Um, I mean, we we did see Omaha beat Kansas City in a preseason game last month, but Kansas City didn't have all of their players. Um, so I, I think it's going to boil down to those two teams. Um, I had Wichita at 15 to one and St. Louis at 20 to one. I, I switched them around. Um, I do, I do think St. Louis could be the better team. Uh, we're going to learn a lot, uh, from St. Louis. What, what are you playing? Are you playing anything or no? No, I'm just looking at the schedule at the schedule for it. So oh. there's only two games for each team. Yep. So there's a very good chance that it will be tied, and it all comes <laughs> down to head-to-head goals against and goal differential. Wait, wait. So if it's round robin, why are there only two games? It shouldn't it be each team gets to play. That's three games. It's not round robin. <laughs> it's it's round, round robin ish. So it's like oval. It's oval robin. Oval Robert. Yeah, sure. So first game is Wings at Comets. Second okay. game is uh, King, Wings in the Kings. Come on, guys. 
Kings at Ambush. Okay. And then we have Comets at the Kings, but I think that one's in St. Louis. And then the Wings at the Ambush. So somehow, in the preseason thing where there's two MASL teams and two M2 teams, they don't play each other. Neither MASL or MASL two team plays each other. That's <laughs> interesting. I didn't really, I didn't really notice. I, I've looked at this schedule a dozen times. I never really noticed that. So in theory, all teams could finish one and one. In theory, all teams could finish one and one, and then if oh, at, have your picker reel ready. In theory, uh, yeah, all teams could finish one and one, or two teams could finish two and zero, oh. <clears throat> and or everyone could finish one one and one. It says if one of the teams has two wins and the other three each have one, that's all teams are gonna. Okay, so my, the odds of all teams finishing two and zero is uh, like three, three hundred million to one. Now, is there gonna be betting? That's what wait, I need wait, to know. Wait, 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 wait. We haven't we haven't gotten past basic counting yet. I don't think we can get into betting yet. Wait, so, what, what? What are we confused about again? If one team. Has two wins. Mm-hmm. Two teams will have one and one, oh, but, and the but, last but, team will have. That's not what it says. Two. Let me read this. If one team has two wins and the other three each have one. Okay. Wait. 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 Okay. Tell me in yeah. what situation that's possible. One. Because let's say KC wins both of their games. St. Louis wins one, but loses one. Omaha wins one and loses one, and KC win ones. Or sorry, and Wichita win ones and loses one. But if I don't think that's even possible, there's only four games. Right. So let's say KC KC plays Wichita first, right? KC wins that game, right? Let's yes. say that, right? KC go, goes one and zero. Oh. The other game is St. Louis and um, oh. Omaha. Let's say Omaha wins that game. Yes? Leave then, it. Yeah. Then the following weekend, KC plays Omaha. Omaha loses that game. So KC's 2-0. and Omaha's 1-1. and And then St. Louis beats um, Wichita. Right? Or did I get it backwards? I don't I got know. It backwards. I'm lost. Matt, do it on your board. I, I, I'm figuring it out. I still don't even. I don't even know where the games are anymore, because this this press release is weird. So only one game has an arena right now. <laughs> which is KC. Which is no. Which is Omaha at the Family Arena. No. Wait. wait only. Okay. The first game says. Wichita Wings at Kansas City Comets. The second game says Omaha at St. Louis Ambush. The third game says Casey at Omaha at the Family Arena. And then the fourth game says Wichita at St. Louis. So does that mean there's one game in KC and three in St. Louis? I think that's how I'm reading this. No, so... so um, yeah. KC... So Omaha is going to host one... Wichita is going to host one. But, but Omaha is not hosting one. Omaha is pl- hosting their home game at Family Arena in this St. Louis. Is, I, 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 don't, I don't know. Why not just have every team play really? every team? That's what a yeah. round robin is. This is, four, this is four games where St. Louis hosts three of them, and St. Louis gets two home games out of the two they play. Oh, wow. Okay. So, you know what? Let's just talk about who's going to win. So, uh, at the end of this whole mess, St. Louis and Kansas City will have not played each other, and Wichita and Omaha will have not played each other. Yes. So, I like what you picked, only I flip St. Louis and Wichita around. Yeah, I I, I had that at first, but then I, I flipped it back around. Um, but. And I'm only doing it because St. Louis is playing everything at home. 
And we all know Gio's going to pick Dallas <sighs> for value. Man, it's so like I want, I want, uh, I think KC is obviously going to win the the cup. I I, I want um, Omaha and Wichita to get at least one win, but that automatically leaves St. Louis to losing both. <laughs> right, right. So there's yeah. So the so the news the news story that says if one of the teams has two wins and the other three each have one can only happen in like a fourth dimension where there's extra games on. Yeah. I don't think that's the thing. And I, I've, I don't want to read this anymore cause it hurts my head and, and, and my head hurts. So I don't want to, I don't want, I'm, I just close it down. I can't deal with it anymore. Hey, look, a new topic. Uh, Kevin wants to know what's this goalie rule. I go back like 20 minutes. So Kevin, the, the long and short of it is, the league is proposing a rule. It hasn't been official yet. It hasn't been publicized yet. We got it leaked through a secret, super secret, confidential source that is our, about 15 different super secret confidential sources. Yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> that, uh, yeah, it did not come from one specific source, otherwise we wouldn't be talking about it. That the league wants to change the rule so the goalies can only possess the ball once or, or touch the ball once per possession. Once they distribute it, they can't touch it until either they cross midfield, the ball goes out of bounds or a stoppage of play, or the opposing team touches the ball. Now, funny enough, I was actually going to talk about this one. So when I put that video together, first I want to say I did not leave anyone out on purpose. I had limited time to do it, and it's really damn hard to find goalie highlights through the incredibly weird, non-searchable interface that is YouTube video. Don't understand why you can't search on a keyword like Milwaukee versus Kansas City and just have all the Milwaukee versus Kansas City come up instead of getting a random Dallas versus Florida thrown into your mix. Mm -hmm. Thank you, mm -hmm. YouTube. Or if you search Milwaukee versus Kansas City October 29th, whatever year, you can't actually get the game from that date because it just doesn't show up in their algorithm. So anyway, I did not leave anyone on purpose. I had a list of goalies I wanted to target. I spent like three hours finding this footage. I did notice something really, really, really strange. And I watch a lot of games on 2x speed in YouTube, which makes the regular normal game look really off. And it also makes the balls bounce funny when you're watching it in two times speed. And it's also just funny to watch. But Danny Waltman in, in Tacoma, I don't think this rule would affect him almost at all. In seven or eight games I went through, that had him in it, and some of them had other goalkeepers that I featured. There were there were once or twice that this rule would have come into play, and that's it per game. That's because of the, the team's playing style, right? And most of the time, he would distribute it, and they'd take it up the field. And the only times they would have to pass back to him is on a free kick or whatever, where it's already a start or starting a play, or something happens, they get the ball back. And even and because they have the ball for the first time, they're running back and they're doing a line change. They bounce it back to him and then he bounces out and he doesn't touch it again. So that was interesting, I thought. I don't know what to make of that. Um, I know that was definitely not the case in a lot of other teams. Yeah. Monterey, Milwaukee. Did not watch any Utica games in Utica. Good. We don't um, want, to, want you to watch them anyways. It's going to be it really... It affect you guys <laughs> tremendously, Matt. It's not even necessary. It's going to be not – It's I don't know what that rule is going to do. I, let's just say it. I don't know what that rule is going to do to Baltimore in, the, in that field. It's going gonna, it's gonna to take no away idea. It's gonna take away a third of a field that doesn't need to lose any more. That almost isn't it. there in the first place. Right, yeah. It's like it, it, it would completely destroy a lot of games. It, I, I feel like it would make Baltimore, Baltimore games really hard to watch because it would literally be a goalie picking up the ball and – Launching it down. I mean, at that point, it, it, assuming they're going to keep the three-line throw rule in place, he might as well just throw for the goal every every time he gets it. Yeah, of course. As a strategy. Yeah. They just play catch the whole game, and the players just go like... <laughs> stupid. That. Every stupid. They're already hard to why I know it's going <laughs> to... Matt, come on. So I know you're not talking about your slow play over there. Williams um, crossing midfield doing the header or doing the, the cross for the header. I almost didn't leave that in the video because that footage was so bad. 
I, and I didn't take from the one that he posted to his site, I or to the Facebook. I took the one right from the game original footage, and it was bad. It was really jerky and hard, like I, I almost just took it out. But it was such a good play that I had to leave it. And I didn't want to search for anybody. Oh. So, yeah. So there's that. Okay, that's enough. That's enough so enough. that's the that's the that's the goalkeeper rule, as as okay. uh, in a nutshell. Ugh. But in yeah, large. so then, then Central Cup. How, how how much time is between the Central Cup and the start of the season? Two weeks. Two weeks. Two. Okay, first game is like end of Two. November, and then the Central Cup is next week. Central Cup is a week from this coming Friday. Right. It's on the twelfth. Right. So we actually have one more show. We can try to figure out what the hell's going on with it before we talk about it. Again. Yeah. And then the first the, game is. 25th. Kansas City at St. Louis on Black Friday, November 26th. St. Louis. St. Louis followed, by, followed by a Saturday game of St. Louis at Kansas City. So do St. Louis, Louis, Kansas City? Yeah. Well, I have three words to say about that weekend. Deep fried turkey. If you haven't tried it, it's definitely worth it. It's good. It's good. It is good. It is delicious. Yep. So, and it's um, nice and moist. So yeah, they're gonna have two games, twenty four hours apart, twenty three hours. Wait, oh. 20, 25 hours. That- Math is hard. Damn. Math is not easy. Yeah, guys, stay in school, kids. Math is not easy, and I'm. A what dumb. are you talking about, Adam? I'm over here laughing at Matt's reactions to the word. I don't know. <laughs> the word is disturbing. So he just had like a brain fart, and I completely missed everything you said, Adam. What were you talking about? <laughs> math being hard and to sit, stay in school, kids. Don't do drugs. Oh, okay, got you. Study math. So, so you were talking about opening opening games and the time between them, right? Sure, I think so. Okay. What was Matt so, doing? What was that? What was happening over there? He was he was having a brain fart because I said no. That you isn't said, that one of our models on the show? Like, it triggers like something in my head, and, it, and it's it's cringy. That's all. I didn't have a brain fart. It was just ew. goalkeeper, aren't you? Oh, yeah. <laughs> so then, but I don't understand. So I, just just real quick, I don't understand why the opening season doesn't start with the um, former or current champion to play a game. All right, I have two words for that answer. Arena availability. Ah, damn it. I know. It's, uh, so there's a couple, there's, there's two things that, uh, well, okay, there's one, there's one thing that could solve all the issues in this league, and that is a one word answer, and that's money. Aside from that, arena availability, like, rules the league because it dictates what happens in the playoffs, it dictates what happens for games, all these back to back trips, all the weird week off. Like team doesn't play for three or four weeks or team has a string of nine home games or six away games or whatever, or somehow Utica or you needs to go to Florida six times in a year or six times in a year, or Utica going to Florida one weekend, going home and then going back the next weekend. Cause it could be worse. It could be worse. I mean, San, Di- San Diego does it for us. Uh, they, they, they come here one weekend, they go back and then they come back the following yeah but there so so remember remember the rhetoric we were it was drilled in into our heads last year um hammer nail you know just san diego wants a strong hard schedule because it proves that they're champions remember that doesn't matter if they only play 11 games and they go four and seven in the regular season they want a hard schedule because they can prove they can win so, Jack says yes to every deal. Jack says there's a direct flight from Syracuse to Florida in the winter. That's an easy trip. However, why can't we stay in Florida for a week? Why are Utica players like, like, wait a minute, it's January or February or whatever hellish month we have to deal with in the upper Midwest Eastern half of the world? Why can't we, coach? Can we just stay in Florida for a week? We'll practice. We promise. <laughs> Uh, who wants to stay in Florida for a week, though? 
I mean, I yeah. My Not my guy. old crabby self gets more and more pissed off every winter. And I question my life choices of why I've lived in Wisconsin my entire life. Not just part of it, entire thing. So there's that. So Kevin, it's an interesting comment you had there. Um, <laughs> he's he's a Cleveland fan. I know, I know. About hopefully the goalie rule doesn't apply to M2. One of the better suggestions that I've heard is why wouldn't the league try this rule out in M2 or M3 or the PASL or whatever that's turning into before they would consider moving it up the ladder in, into other. And that's what they, and that's what they do in uh, major league baseball. Um, major league baseball probably will implement, implement a pitch clock to, to kind of speed up games. Um, and they started mm-hmm. that in, I think, think triple a should have mm-hmm. started that in 1974 is what they should have started that in <laughs> um i'm a big so i'm a, yeah i'm a big time pool fan pool player billiards and uh almost every tournament has a shot clock and it's 30 seconds and you get one 30 second extension per rack and these are the highest level of players in the world who if you you can lose a match by missing one shot, you can lose the entire match um, against some of these guys. So, so fun fun trivia question: Do you know where the shot clock was invented? Do I know where the shot clock was invented? Are we talking about like physical place or like game sport? sport? At the, the shot clock, the the. Well, I think it's more the twenty four second shot clock, but I think that's the first shot clock that was ever used for basketball. Yeah, I was gonna say. Well, basketball. yeah, yeah, for basketball, yeah. I've heard people say, "Oh, is it? It was it in Syrac- Syracuse." Yeah. No, I yeah. would have never guessed that. I would bear. I barely guessed the sport after you gave it all away. I would have never. Yeah. Well, uh, maybe I would have guessed that. Knowing you, I would have guessed that. Maybe would have guessed uh, Utica. Yeah. Like Hannah's answer: Who's going to win this game? Utica. Well, Utica's not playing. Uh, Who's going to win? Man. Utica. Utica. <laughs> Um, I've heard people oh, talk about putting a cute. shot clock in indoor soccer, and I think that would be a disaster. Oh, God, no. No, because then they'll just spend more time in the defensive half. Yeah. They do it in uh, lacrosse, I think. Once you cross midfield, you have like a minute to... Yeah, I just think... So... Oh, so... Funny kind of side story. Aaron De La Rosa posted a weird ass video in one of the groups the other day. That was an Indian game. And I had no idea what it, it was not in English. So I had no idea what was going on. There were just weird whistles and guys doing this and you know, this and that. And it was like a, they had to like truck cross over a line without getting tagged or tackled or need on the head or something. Watch that at two X speed. Yeah. I saw your, I saw your message on that. And it reminded me of the time that I watched Australian Rules football, and there's just these random whistles all over the place. <laughs> football, American football. <laughs> like, why did the whistle blow? What's this mean? Why did the score go up? What? Nothing happened differently than what happened last time. I don't want our sport to turn into that. Oh, that would American be so football. much fun, though. That would be so much fun. It's like 5-2, to two, and then all of a sudden, like, you see, like, the score go up to 5-4, to four, and you have no idea what's going on. You're just like... I like, I like the idea of. I like simplicity. N- well, that too, but I'm about to rock your world here. Let's incorporate the picker wheel with MASL games. Yes. Wow. So you don't know how many points your goal is worth until after you score it. Matt, I yes. mean, Adam, I'm glad they never made us commissioners of the league. <laughs> I mean, this could be a lot of fun. We glad. wouldn't last. The, we wouldn't last the first three hours, but this would be a lot of fun. <laughs> because what you do is you do oh well, Brad had a really good reason on why Syracuse goes to or Utica goes to Florida and back twice because they have to pay the players a per diem on, when they're on travel so it's cheaper to fly them back than to pay the per diem every day during that week yeah 
I mean, it, it makes sense. And also, I'm pretty sure they don't want to, like, if they're not traveling with, well, I, maybe I'm, let me, let me not make this comment, because I was going to say, if they're not traveling with their families, they wouldn't want to stay. But I'm pretty sure they would. <laughs> yeah. And who knows, so, I'm sure we'll hear about players that stay down there anyway. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm but, sure. But no, no. So you have, like, your Wheel of Fortune type wheel. No. <laughs> you have one, two, three point goals. You have like a bankrupt type thing that either is no points or it takes a goal away. Or you have, you could have like random, like a, you you score a goal is you score a goal and you get the little bitty sliver of the pie and it's a two minute penalty, but you still get the point. This is a winner. This idea is a winner. Yep. We could do like, like a uh, formula E does, which is a all electric version of formula one. Um, it's seen as both like the future of racing and a complete joke all at the same time. They have some big names in there and I am, I'm not kidding on this. They give away like extra, like, so you get power as a like battery power and power can equate horsepower. The fans during the race will vote on which driver they want to give the extra horsepower to. And at one point in the ra- in the race, that, that driver will get extra horsepower added to their car. That they can use whenever they want or whatever it is. <laughs> this is like Mario Kart. So yeah, yeah, exactly. It's you, like you get the turbo. <laughs> so when you want to donate like, a portion of your cell phone battery. <laughs> we put like corn dogs at random places under the turf, and if you eat it, you get like super big and super strong, and you can run around like. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. No, but I, I, this season is going to be interesting. Oh my! What the? Well, you okay there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 Threw in, threw in the hat, like throw it. Oh, in the hat. oh, okay. Oh, got it. Because it landed okay. perfectly right in front of the camera with the logo underneath. Yeah, I think you put it on top of it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That would make. <laughs> so uh, I think we've covered just about everything there is to cover this week. Yeah. Uh, next Did we week. About... Did we talk about? Yeah, that? Next... I was just about to say that. <laughs> yeah. Well, you want to say it? No, I was saying it was like all three of us. Never mind. I'll be quiet. Let's not talk about next week then. Fine. No, no, no. No, no, no. That's right. No, I don't want to. No, no I don't want to. No. Matt, can you tell him? Can <laughs> <Okay>, what? <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, Adam. Go ahead, Adam. <laughs> so next week, you mother. <laughs> okay, next week, uh, Joey and hopefully Nick McDonald and the guys from Sunflower State. Sunflower City? Is it Sunflower City or Sunflower State? I'm pretty sure it's Sunflower State. Pretty sure it's Sunflower State. But there probably is a city inside of Sunflower State. It's like Sun Sunflowerville? I'm Apples? pretty sure it's, it's called Sunflower State. So F-State. we're gonna open we're gonna open up the show with those guys. City ish. Yeah, that that works. Uh we're gonna open up the show with the guys from Sunflower State on at 8 30 p.m. Central Time, 9 30 p.m. Eastern. 6.30 Pacific, um, 7.30. If you're watching on a mountain, it's 7.30. If you're on a mountain, if you're in the town of, uh, oh, I forgot, I forgot to grab a name. I had a really cool, funny name in India that I used to use. Oh, it's 2.30 a.m. or whatever. Uh, they're going to open the show up. They get a, they're get they going to be on from 8.30 to 9 p.m. Central. Ah. Uh, I know some of you guys from Sunflower area are watching this or will be watching this. So tune in next week. Uh, we will do our like little intro thing, um, but we'll, when we go live, it's going to be all somewhere between three and seven of us. Yes. Come on, man. Get your jerseys together. Uh, yeah, somewhere, somewhere like that. Is that the soccer hey, jersey? It looks like it was a fifth grade science fair project behind that. Fun fact about Sunflower, before we go, fun fact no. about Sunflower. They're, they're, I guess you want to call it, they're one of their teams that are under their umbrella is called queso blanco which means white which means cheese. white teas did you see their logo <laughs> yes it's hilarious it's a ball in a bowl of queso <laughs> it's a soccer ball <laughs> on top of a bowl of queso i saw that last night um scrolling through facebook and i was like all right i told my fan like everyone study up on their spanish you know remember their spanish they learned in high school there's a soccer team out there called queso blanco or my 21 year olds, doesn't that mean white cheese? <laughs> like, yes, it does. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. 
That's uh, a great. That's a great way to end. <laughs> that's a great way. Hey, uh, I do have. I do have one thing to end with. Yes. Matt knows um, what's no. coming already, Matt. Yeah. I'm going to say goodnight now. So, uh, no, you, you got to see it through. You got to see exactly it through. know what's going to happen. And I'm just going to, uh, my hand is going to be on the done button. So, no, no, you got to see it through. So, this guy walks into a bar, looks all frantic. He orders 10 beers and just starts chugging them one after another. And the bartender's like, wow, you must be really in a hurry. The guy's like, yeah, you'd be in a hurry too if you had what I had. Our turns like, why? What do you have? And he's like, two dollars. <laughs>